say there's nothing like having to get together in Montana with some good friends, good music, and guess what? It's a pig pulling party. That's what I think they call it. I'm looking forward to it, so stay tuned. Okay, I'm still in Montana having a great time. I'm at a party, but I kind of just snuck away for just a minute because I want to talk about being creative and I want to talk about how you have to be able to come up with a lot of ideas anytime you want to. In fact, you have to learn how to harness your creativity. You have to learn how to manage it, focus it, so you're in control of it and you can come up with ideas anytime you want to. And during this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how the pros do it. Okay, I just had a little bit of dinner, walk, sneaking away from the party, but I wanna talk a little bit, like I said, about how can you be creative any, any day? How can you manage your creativity? How you can come up with ideas anytime you want to and not wait for inspiration to hit because if you're waiting for that, uh, it's gonna be painful. So this is what I do. I like to collect images, experiences, so what I like to do, I need input from other different sources that I can kind of remember, jot down, take a picture, so I can use later. So what I do is that I will go down to the stores and I will sit there and I'll go to all the stores and look at all the products and just kind of watch people interact. I love doing that. But I also like going to the bookstore and just kind of looking at what people are reading and find some really interesting books for myself I'll even go to the movies when hopefully they open again and just sit there and just absorb different types of things, especially I love movies, you guys. So I believe you have to bring all these different things into your mind here and just relax. And so you have to be active. You have to be current. You have to do all these things because you don't know when you're going to bring some of these things that you've seen along the way. You don't know that when you've seen an idea maybe here or over there, that it sparks this inspiration. You don't know if you're watching a movie on a Monday, that maybe there's something in that movie that inspires you. You don't know when you're reading magazines and you're, you're, this information when you're reading it kind of just sits back and kind of just percolates in the back of your head and you can pull that out later. So what I like to do is go out and, and bring as many different um, visuals, any different, many different types of experiences and, and just kind of collect them. And sometimes I take a lot of pictures too, but that's just my process to get started. And I'm a collector of, of things, of things I've seen, things I've, I've learned, and I just let it sit back there until I'm ready to be creative. <laughs> some industries which you have to do you know study study the industry that you're in look at some of the products that are on the shelf today try to go back and see what people have brought out years and years ago do a little bit of history but one way that you can be very current and very very creative is is be current on what's going on today that's right because a lot of these ideas that you see um, are based off things that are happening today and everybody can relate to. We had a wonderful person on one of our free uh, webinars, Russell Hornsby from Sepia Toys, and he has this great new product line called Cats and Pickles. And how did he come up with that? Well, of course, there was a video that went viral of how cats react to pickles and cucumbers and they go kind of berserk. That was something he saw that was current and built a product line around that concept and even, of course, did commercials and products and plush, everything. But he was inspired by watching something that was current. So keep your ears and your eyes open on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Like I said earlier, go to movies, but be current because some of that information you can use to come up with great ideas. So here are two examples 
of how you can just go down to a store or go down to the mall and, and be inspired. I was working on this one project where I was trying to come up with designs for guitar picks and not being uh, a musician and being 50 years old, I wasn't quite sure what type of designs kids would want. So I went down to the mall and I found this one store called Hot Topic. I went inside and holy smokes, uh, there, it was a surprise. And But one thing I noticed, there were skulls everywhere. And this one particular sticker um, reminded me that maybe this kind of inspired me to think, you know, why do guitar picks have to be a certain shape? Why couldn't a guitar pick be in the shape of a skull because that chin could be the part that you strum the guitar. And sure enough, I came up with a, a, a new design of a guitar pick called Gray Picker. I also went down to the Disney store and I love walking in there and it's always so inspiring to see all the, the Disney characters and some of the new movies that are coming out. But at the time, I was trying to come up with Oh, cups, making cups fun for kids. And I had this idea of a rotating cup uh, and canteen, but I wasn't quite sure how to manufacture it. So I went down to the Disney store and sure enough, I saw this, these little cups that was, if you shake them, um, there's sparkles in between the two walls of the cup. And I thought, wow, there's a double wall cup. What if I had one that could actually spin or actually move? And it inspired me to come up with the concept of spin cups and I was able to license that idea and it sold in all the Disney stores and theme parks around the world. One of my techniques to come up with ideas it's just make simple changes. I might change the material. I might change kind of the design, the shape. And so I kind of break it down piece by piece and just ask myself, what can I do different? And I did this with the Michael Jordan wall ball. I asked myself, does the backboard have to be square? No, it doesn't have to be square. Could it be in any shape? And that's how I came up with the Michael Jordan wall ball. But I also questioned myself, what about sound? Does the net have to be the, the way it's designed, could it be a solid material? Does it, does it have to be just one rim? Could it be multiple rims? I start to question myself, what if, what about this? What about that? And that creative game that I play allowed me to come up with the Michael Jordan wall ball just by questioning the material, the size, does it have to be a certain way? <laughs> Creativity is a muscle that needs to be exercised all the time and you have to practice at it. But I realized that, there, you know, being creative, you cannot do that eight hours a day. It's impossible. So what I used to do is that I would do all the hard work in the morning and then later I would be creative. I would set a couple hours aside where I could just dream. I could question anything and I would have this big sketch pad and write down all my ideas and every once in a while when I was relaxed and when I played games something unusual just popped out I never knew I wasn't expected but I just played a little bit but I did realize this you cannot do that all day long I could only do it for at least an hour at a time before I got tired and then I would go off and do something else that like I said earlier to bring some new new things into my mind I'd go down to the mall maybe go to a movie but I needed to take a break but I did know this I was creative every single day day in and day out until that muscle of creativity was fine-tuned and I could come up with an idea any time I needed one. I didn't say it was good, but I could come up with a lot of ideas and every once in a while, something great appeared. One morning reading the Modesto B, there was an article about how labels need more space for very important information. And they were saying what a big problem this was, but 
there's never enough space on labels for things like drug facts and dosing instructions. So that inspired me to create Spinformation, a rotating label to deliver more information. Now, what you can do, sometimes I would I would have a partner and we would just kind of talk about it and we could start questioning ourselves and we could bounce ideas back and forth off each other. And that's another way of just kind of being inspired and, and talking about it and who knows what's gonna come out. So if you have a partner, have a kind of a brainstorming session. And like I mentioned earlier about collecting things, make sure all those visuals, you put them up on the, all, up on the wall, keep them all, take pictures, because you never know what you're gonna take from here, over here, bring it together and come up with something brand new. Partnerships can be extremely important, especially when you're coming up with ideas. And I met a great illustrator at Worlds of Wonder. Russell Hicks was doing all the illustrations for Teddy Ruxpin for all the books. And I thought this was going to be a fantastic partnership. You see, I could not illustrate, do any drawings, and Russell Hicks was fantastic. So we would team up. I would come up with an idea. We would talk about it. He would draw them up, and then I would call those companies to see if they were interested in licensing some of our ideas. And, and as you can see, this one particular illustration, it was called Fast Food Puppets, and we were able to license that to a company. Applause. There's another great technique if you're coming up with ideas. Take two different items, bring them together, and see if you can come up with something brand new. It's a fun game. In fact, what you can do, you can walk down to the local store and go down one aisle and make some mental notes of the products that you're seeing. Then go down the other aisle and bring them together to see if you can create something brand new. It's called mix and match. I, I've done it my whole career. Try it, you'll love it. You'll come up with some great ideas. One of the games that I play is called Mix and Match, where you take two items, you bring them together and create something brand new. And sure enough, here's a great example where someone took a screwdriver, flashlight, because it's hard to see in those tight spots, combine them both together, and here's the product. Here's another thing you can do. If you start to work with these companies and they know that you're very creative, why don't you ask them, what are they looking for? That's the best thing to, to target your creativity if you know what they're looking for. It helps you. I want everybody to be able to target their creativity because like I said, if you're just kind of waiting for a great idea to come by, that's really hard. You need to come up with a lot of ideas. So ask those companies you're working with and say, hey, look, what can I work on? What are you guys looking at? What's, what's your next goal? What is your wish list? That's what you need to ask. Then focus that creativity, play all the games I've been talking about on this video and see what you can come up with that's new. <music> Sometimes when you build those relationships with those licensees, they're going to give you feedback. And in this particular situation, Tim Brennan, which he lives over there in London, was designing for this company, Joseph Joseph. And one day they told him, hey, look, if you could work on this particular product and make it safer, it was a mandolin, because it's very dangerous. So they gave him the input and sure enough, he took that input, created a brand new variation on the mandolin to make it safer, and they licensed it from Tim. All right, 
Also remember, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to come up with something that's so different that requires education. What I want you to do is come up with those simple ideas at first. Come up with the ideas that are slight modifications on existing ideas. That's the easiest way to get started. It's not that difficult. Like I said, you don't have to reinvent the wheel because when you do, there's a lot of risk. When you make a modification on an existing idea that already is out there, number one, you know there's a market for it. Number two, there's a very good chance it can be manufactured. See, that's the easy way to do it. So study the marketplace, look at these companies very carefully, look at their product line and imagine what are they going to do next? Because they are going to come up with new innovations. They're basically going to look at their product line and go, hey, how do we make a new and improvement on this existing product that's selling so well? What I want you to do is make make those new ideas, look at the product line, come up with those slight variations on their existing ideas, and then show it to those companies because that is a safe bet. That takes away risk. Okay, the party's over. The music was fantastic. The food was really, really good. <sighs> Sun's going down. I'm going to be heading back to the lake. Just wanted to say the one way for me to get my juices flowing, for me to get back to being creative, is taking a break from the craziness and just soaking it all up and having a great time. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.